Hey family, what's up? CJ and Jamie here. I got Sifu Fu and I got Sifu Larry in the house. All we are is dust in the wind, dude. Lucky Shadows and tea. dust. Shadows and yeah. dust. Ooh. And somebody didn't turn off his computer audio, so I won't mention any names, Sifu Larry. <clears throat> Sorry about that, family. I'm We're, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You told you told me you're I'm ready. I'm sorry. I'm ready now. You're ready now. You good to go? What are we doing today? Well, we're gonna be answering questions about martial arts, you know, kung fu type stuff. Who does of stuff. that? I, I'm pretty sure you do. At least I hope so. <laughs> I mean, you are running this business. You teach. Uh, you, don't tell no one. <laughs> don't tell no one you teach. He teaches no, just so you know. They want lessons. I mean, they want to. But you hey, know, but then when I said to Sifu all these years ago, I told you I never. So one day I walk into class and I see Sifu swinging on a pull up bar. And he goes, This is like 5 30 in the morning. Look at me, I'm a pendulum. I'm like, Oh, and I was manual labor and lifting heavy pieces of wood. And I'm like, Man, I'd like to be a pendulum one day. What I didn't realize was what it meant to be a teacher was people were going to try to punch me in the face. <laughs> this is why you should always really think things through. <laughs> before you, you know, yeah. decide to make decisions or pray about anything. Be very thorough about what you want and be, you know, really research. Yeah, just make sure if you want to teach a martial art, you're going to probably, people are going to want to punch you in the face. They're going to want to punch you in the face. That's part of the job. And they're going to smile because they're like, oh, I can't get them. Let me try even harder. Yeah, it happens like that sometimes. Okay. It's true. I'm going to make sure things are working right. It's true. So, oh, hey, do you want to give everyone a little health update or anything? I'm still here. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. He's definitely he not dead yet. yet. <laughs> well, well, according to I, CJ, we're going to 140, so I got some time. 140, that's it? <laughs> we're going even further than 140? Look, after I found out that lie, <laughs> we got to boost it up to 250. <laughs> well, I, well, there we go. I'm kicking. He's doing good, as you can see. All right, family. Well, any if you have any questions about martial arts, health and wellness, fitness, and anything else within reason, we're here for you. Go ahead and put your comment and question in the comment section, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook. If you haven't already, like this video and share it on so other people can share uh, and get to know all this awesome information too. And hey, who knows, you might get a training partner to just by sharing your personal passion. And uh, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, you know, let us know where you're coming in from. I see my dad's already on. Hey, dad, how's it going? We got uh, John Veer and we have Andrew. Oh, he says, I haven't been on in a while. I have a back injury. Well, I'm sorry to hear about that, but as long as your eyes work, you can watch anytime, brother. You don't, you don't have to participate and, and follow along, but I hope you are healing up nicely. Um, from your injury and making sure to take care of yourself, mind, body, and spirit to help aid in your healing. And we also have Melanie, we have Dominic, we have Fernando. Uh, let's see, I see some other people on watching, but they haven't said hello yet. Hey, John, how's it going? And we'll wait for some uh, other questions to come in. I'm going to answer the questions from the, not last week, but the week before. We had to cancel last week's because uh, Sifu Larry's daughter and my daughter, uh, Jaya, so Kara and Jaya, had uh, an event at school that was called International Day where all the grades get together and the, each grade has its own uh, country that they do. It's really cool, they do it every year. So as the kids go through the school, they get to experience different cultures and whatnot and it was, it was really fun. And my grandparents were in town. It was the first time I've had any family come visit me uh, in New Jersey, so that was really neat. And they got to see there, uh, see Jaya perform and whatnot and they thought it was really neat. So we had lots of fun. Uh, so we missed you guys and gals, but we did have a uh, family stuff that we were all taking care of. So it's good to be back. So this is from two weeks ago. Uh, this question that I'm going to ask from DJ says, when using the rice trainer, how do you side palm strike if you are starting from position where the elbow is close to the bags with the arm folded towards your body? How would I decide the palm strike? Yeah, he says, how do you side palm strike if you are starting from position where the elbow is close to the bag with the arm folded towards your body? So he's talking like this. I'm thinking so. So we'll go with the rice trainer. I guess he's talking from this angle here. Right, so this is my guess. He's talking about elbow closest towards the rice trainer, hand towards the body. Um, side palm, basically, it depends on where your hand is in that time. So if I'm like this, if I'm like this, you know, um, the key is to create that, that torque in the wrist. So if I'm here, 
based on the, the, the striking you want to do and the height, you can go from here into a, a rotation of the wrist as a side palm this way. Uh, if you're, you're more on this side, then you would go more flat palm. Uh, side palm is usually more from across the body out towards the center. If you're more from the center, you wouldn't side palm because you got to come into center. If I'm from here, I would more or less like make a fist strike or a flat palm strike. If I'm going to do a side palm, it's usually, like I said, it's, it's generally from across the body, from center to cross. Uh, I mean, from shoulder to, to center, from across the body, from the shoulder to the center. If I'm going from the sh uh, shoulder to my center, on the opposite side, then I want a more like fist or palm strike. I would never use a side palm because of the angle in which I'm approaching. Okay, so that's that's based on what you're writing. That's I think that's what you're trying to say. Um, there are basically different types of palm strike. There's forward palm strike, okay, side palm strike, spade strike, which is, is from from here, and then the reverse palm strike. Okay, so um, those are the basically um, four ways you can hit with your your your, your wrist air from the palm. So you got this, okay, uh, from, the, from here, the spade, the side, and then the back side of your, your hand. So um, those are the points at which you can hit, and that all depends on, on where you're trying to go from where you are. That, that's really what matters. Wherever my hand is, where I'm pointing, then wherever I want to go to the target, for example, if I go straight out in front and use a flat, if I cut to the side and I rotate here with my elbow points, then the side palm would be better. Again. That, that just all depends on, on, on where your hand is and to where you want to go near your target. That would be the best. Awesome. Thank you for that, Sifu. All right. So let's see. Uh, DJ also had another question. When extending my arm to strike, if I find that my arm is too long and my hand ends up too far to the side of the bag, almost missing the bag, how can I prevent that? Well, there's a couple things. One, create better uh, move away from the target, like get your body away from that so you're not choked up. A lot of times if you're more close to the target, don't hit with your palm, hit with your forearm. Arms are made to hit close range to mid range, hands are made to hit mid range to long range. So um, it's very difficult to get a lot of power from here as opposed to striking with your elbow. They're made for close range. So forearms to elbows are your better ways of hitting a close range. Um, so if you find you're very close to the pad, if you want to hit with your palm, you're going to have to take a step to compensate for the space that you don't have. And if, if, if you're very close and you can't make the space, then hit with your forearm to the elbow instead. Don't use your palm. There you go. Don't use your palm. So Dominic said, Siva, do you still hold group grappling classes? And what can one expect to do during one? Uh, yeah, I do do that. I usually do that on a Saturday um, uh, um, around 11 o'clock. And um, I use... I use a lot of my time on the grappling to teach people how to lock because the art of any grappling really in the end is to get a lock. Okay, is to get the lock. If you can't efficiently lock, then you're not an efficient grappler. So the end game of any grappler is to get a good lock. So we focus a lot on the locks. So um, I have my students roll into positions, move here, and then I get them to get certain type of locks. And I have a student just just learn how to create that proper seal and make the person tap. If he doesn't tap, then it, it's, it's not proper lock. Locking requires you know, pressure, it requires direction. You need to have those two, and you need to know how to balance it out between your, your, your holds or your, your squeeze or, or, or whatever it is you're trying to do to create the proper alignment between every point. So a lot of times, like when people do, a great example is on arm lock. Let's say, well, I'm not gonna wrap her elbow, but her arms are here. A lot of people might arc backwards and you're allowing energy to escape. So she can actually feel like it doesn't really hurt her. She can pull away. The key is to learn how to create all four sides. So I don't want to create all the back. I want to create forward mm -hmm. pressure. Yeah. And, 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 and she, you can see her body respond differently. So we, we, I always teach the students how to create that proper energy control between all four sides. And wherever one's weak, they have to learn how to balance out the energy by moving one over the other. And I teach all the science behind it. And then... Uh, we work with students to get that so they can get that down to muscle memory so when they do it, they can psh, immediately, psh, immediately, psh, immediately, right away. And so we do a lot on, on learning how to get the technique into the lock, not about just grappling into a lock, but learn how to get the lock. Because if your lock doesn't work in the end, it doesn't matter how well you get into it. If you can't finish it, it means nothing. Right, right. Uh, so Fernanda said, hey, how are you? Happy to know about you. I am from Peru. Well, welcome from uh, Peru, we are here in New Jersey in the United States. Uh, we have lots of members all around the world, so welcome. 
and uh, we are happy to know you too. And uh, Corey says, Sifu, I am having trouble using kicks with hand striking combos. Any tips? Well, when you're hitting first, it's hard to kick because you're in close range. Use your knees instead. Um, if you're going to use your kicks uh, in combination, use your kicks first from the distance. Then bring your hands in. So if I'm more like from a distance, I want to use like really the most efficient are the low kicks like slant kick or side kicks or front kicks. Now a lot of people in MMA, they use round kicks and that works uh, too. I'm not going to say it doesn't. But you can see it's, it, it's, it's, those kicks, they're designed to wear down a person. So rarely do you see you get a kick and a round kick and the guy wants to drop, right? Rarely do you ever see that. So they are kicking, kicking, wearing down the leg. Eventually that guy starts to get hurt and then it wears down. But to get a very effective, very fast kicks, you want to get kicks around the knee, knee area. Because if you can break the kneecap, that guy's going to drop. So kicking from a, a foot to hand is like low, tight, create a, a fast kick from the bottom. Once you do that and learn to, to, to land on your foot and move in on that. If you're going to do a side kick, you want to shuffle in like this and, and get your kick and then land and get your strike afterwards. If you're doing like a combination strike, it's very difficult to get a kick because you're so ch uh, choked up and tight. So if I'm going to move in with hands, I want to move in for my knee after that. Then I can go down and hit towards the legs like that. Um, Mid-range or high-range kick will not bode well when you're that close if you're going to go with hands first. Start with your legs first, then the hands. If you're in tight with your hands, then use your knees. Uh, you got to understand your range. Your, your legs are made for long-range uh, attacks, so they're made for out here. So if you're trying to close in the disc and then you got to kick, you're trying to step away. You're giving up pressure to the opponent, allowing him to put pressure on you. So if I'm getting with my hands first, then drive your knee after. And once I get to like my knee, once I hit and affect the person, you can now go in for the shin type of hits, um, for the legs and do uh, hooking techniques and sweeping techniques to the leg. Uh, but if you're far, then do a shuffle side kick, front kick, uh, back kick, spinning back kick, all those straight line kicks, they're, they're very, very efficient, they're very effective. If you watch um, videos of Bruce Lee when he spars, he does mainly shuffle side kicks. That's why you always see him like, like you see him stand, whoa, and then he'll wah, and get into that. Because they're very fast, they're very effective too. Um, when you can get a kick like that, you pretty much will end the guy. You wouldn't have to follow through with a hands technique. Those type of kicks are very, very powerful, and they are very fast. They're very hard to see. Um, feigning technique is a great way to get into with the legs. So, and Bruce Lee did a lot of it too. He would jab with the eyes and then get the legs in through that. So the guy sees the hands, he'll respond to that, and then you get the legs in fast. Uh, they do cover long range, so they are great to do that type of stuff. I do a lot of feigning techniques. I, I show my students how to create feigning with the hands, give people signs, and you, you, know, you, you, get, you get that. And then, and then you give those type of kicks. And, and, and those kicks are very good because if you kick uh, mid-range from the waist down, um, they're very hard to stop. Okay, it's a very, very difficult stop because most people are trained with the hands. They'll try and bring the hands down, and it's not natural. You got to learn how to bring your legs up to help that, or cut the angles, or a little bit of both. If you're kicking a little from the like from the side down, it's very hard. You see, that's why in MMA those round kicks hit almost every time because it's very difficult to stop those, especially when you're putting a lot of weight towards your lead leg. It's very hard to do. Uh, to, to stop a round kick to the thigh. You have to empty out and you got to learn how to raise. Like Muay Thai guys, they sit in the rear because that way they can bring the legs up to counter that. But if you're weighted towards your lead leg, it's very difficult to stop. So uh, waist level to low level kicks are really, really efficient at distance. Shuffle side kicks are very, one of the, one of, uh, to me, one of the most advantageous way of kicking to close in the distance somewhere and get that power and still have that recovery. So when you're going for a shuffle side, you go, and then you're landing right away. And then again, you can follow with combinations from that. So th they are the thing. But if you're going for the hand first, don't go for the legs after, go for the knees. They are the better uh, techniques when you're coming in. If you set it up like this, it's easier to go for the knees than it is to go for here and then, and then go backwards to get the kicks. It, it, it's taking pressure off. It's making you go forward and then going backwards. It's, it's breaking continuity of motion for you. So you don't want to do that. Thank you, Sifu. Some good tips right there. So Melanie says, which of the five animal styles would each of you consider your dominant style? So Sifu Larry, we're going to need you out here. What, what about you, Sifu? Uh, people ask me that all the time, and I tell them like, all, they're all very good. Uh, one day I'll say crane because I'll tra practice an animal for one month. If I'm doing crane, I'll say crane. If I do tiger, I'll say tiger. If I do leopard, I'll say leopard. Uh, I, whatever I'm practicing, I get my 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 essence into that movement, that's the movement for me at that moment. 
Um, all animals are very good. Um, but if you're going to say by in terms of definition, I think to me the dragon is the best because it contains all the other four and its own. But all of them have strength and, 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 uh, and uh, weaknesses uh, to their attributes. That's going to depend on your personality and, and, and your body type and the way you want to move in it. So uh, they all have beautiful attributes and they all have similarities. Like tiger goes like this, right? Crane goes more like this. Uh, the difference in them is, is the stance, the structure, and, and the method in which you, you strike with. Tiger has a strong stance. Crane uses more focus into striking for points. So everyone has their positive and negative. And that's going to depend on your personality and your body type and the way you move. So, Sipu Larry, what is your favorite five animal to do? Snake and crane. Snake, snake and crane. That's not, no, one, one, not one. Well, and. I like snake. But I, I like to steal. I, li I like the leopard paw strike. You see? So, <laughs> so, I just like a lot of different things. I, you know, I think you take elements that. Basically, they're saying don't get to. stuck in one style, even if it's the five animals. Chicken style. Chicken. Chicken. Chicken's my favorite style. I actually haven't studied the five animals. I've only been the recipient uh, of uh, five animal strikes, and they all really, really hurt. So what I'm saying is, whatever you gravitate towards, practice it well, and it will do well. So I, I don't have a comment on what my favorite one is, but if it's like anything else I've been learning uh, with no deck Na and Shin Na and Wing Chun and, and Tai Chi and Qigong, I'd probably be like them, and depending on what I'm going to be doing and when I'm going to be doing it is when I would pull out one of the different tools from the different five animals. So, and I also don't have favorites of, of anything really, so I, it would just be a little bit of everything for me too. So I know that probably doesn't help you, Melanie, but if you have any questions, like if you are curious maybe what we'd recommend for you to start learning for the five animals, we could do that in a, a video for you. So let us know. So Dev D says, uh, may you teach Wing Chun martial art in Hindi? Uh, if we had someone that could translate in Hindi, absolutely we would. Unfortunately, we don't have anyone on our staff um, and we don't have the funds to do that. Uh, one of the things we do want to do as NRL grows and does expand, we would like to have our material in different languages, obviously, because you then know, we can reach Matt more people. Is, uh, speaks Hindi. If we ask him, he may. I don't think he will. He's been I would busy. say it's a lot. The, it's also, a lot the other stuff. problem is, is there's tons and tons of videos, so it has to be someone that can literally just do it as a job to be able to get through the content, which means we have to be able to pay them well, and we're just Carthic not thick speaks Hindi. at mm -hmm. the place to do that. But hey, if any of our Hindi-speaking brothers and sisters out there want to help us, email us at support at shallon.com or Spanish-speaking, or Chinese-speaking, or any other kind of speaking Russian, all this good stuff, because we've had lots of uh, lots of people from all around the world request all kinds of different languages and whatnot. And we would love to have all our content in all those different languages, but we definitely need either monetary support or the support of the actual work uh, for people helping us do it. So one day, brother, one day. Uh, Fox Goku says, hi fam, two questions. First, I saw one of your videos talking about the knuckles to hit, and you mentioned the top two usually, but the bottom three when hitting a board, etc. Can you explain more on why? Well, when hitting, the bottom two is very dangerous to hit with, and I wouldn't try to say bottom three, but reality is it's, it's very rare that you can hit bottom three. Uh, bottom three works best when you're l hitting level to the shoulder. Mm -hmm. If you start to range too high or too low, it becomes not eff efficient or effective. And if you look at the body mechanics, um, the top two knuckles anatomically, they're supported by the wrist. So you're covering most of your wrist with these two knuckles. These bottom two knuckles share just a very little point in your wrist right here. So it's, it's very ineffective in terms of um, structural integrity. It breaks much faster than these two. Um, if you ever look at people when they break their hands in a fight, they always break it here. You don't ever see people break here. It's very, very rare. They ha probably have to hit some piece of steel that has a spike in it that, that went into the knuckle for them to break their hand that way. Most people break their hands on the bottom two, and the reason why is because the nature of energy wants to go the path of least resistance, right? So if you're hitting something and all of them hit, these take the, less amount, uh, the least amount of sh uh, stress, so you're gonna wind up hurting that more than anything else. Now, with that said, the reason why the top two is more efficient is because when you're hitting someone like in their jaw, in their body, you want to have the strongest structure so you can do the deepest, most powerful damage before it feeds back into you. So you got to pay attention to that, okay? Now, anatomically speaking, the bottom, top two, bottom three is very efficient. I never teach bottom three as your first line of hit. I always teach top two to bottom three. And what I mean by that, if I'm hitting her in the face, it'll be the top two to the bottom three, and, and that works when you're about shoulder level. 
once you deviate, let's say you're hitting someone who's much taller mm -hmm. or shorter, if you look at this, as I drive up this high, you can see these two knuckles draw backwards more and these two knuckles protrude more. The problem is, is these are the thicker, heavier, denser arms. So when you're trying to hit and you turn this, this is going to tend to drop. So if I told her to kneel down a little bit lower, go lower, and, and have her hit me in the face, and she does the bottom three, and I came in, bottom three, come in, she's going to feel that collapse yeah. into her. And the reason why is because, like I said, these two bones, when you try to protrude the bottom three, they, they tend to rock back more because they're the bigger support of the wrist, so they tend to drop more. So for her to compensate for this, she has to turn the top two to create the counter force and drive that, that in. And if you practice this technique and you do this, I demonstrate all the time, I have big people do it. So I'll go with the bottom three and I'll go like this and I'll tell her to resist me with all her might. When I turn mm -hmm. the top two, she moves. Mm -hmm. She cannot stop mm -hmm. that, okay? Yep. There's much more driving force behind the top two than it is the bottom three. That's one. So when you're hitting higher, you can see the angle starts to drop down. Right. So to counter totally that sense. force, yep. you need to turn it forward. So that'll keep you steady. It allows you to drive much more powerfully without that resistance or I say the feedback that comes back to you. Now when you take it and you hit lower towards the body, you can see the bottom three starts to pull away from the forward intent. You see that the, the top knuckle to the top two knuckle protrude more out or the bottom two actually draw in. So when you're hitting the gut to try to go and then turn the bottom three, you have to compensate by dropping your body into your elbow more, which is gonna take more time, more energy. It's easier just from the bottom hit, just to take the top two and drive the bottom, uh, the top two knuckles as you drive down. It's much more efficient. I demonstrate all the time. Uh, if I hit her with the bottom three, I have to literally go down. I go like mm. this, I could just drive the top two and you can hear her just move from that. Um, it's much more powerful. Less, it takes less energy to have to do that too, but you get more power out of it because you don't have to waste energy trying to get to the attack. You just focus energy into the attack. So the top two is the more prevalent of all hits. Uh, and I, I, I demonstrate it all the time. I, I have people, just like I said, resist as hard as I can. I'll demonstrate when I put it in their body, I'll put it on them, and I'll drive the bottom three, and you, often you see them come over. But you do the top two, you often see them collapse in. And it shows you it's much more efficient. Uh, I always demonstrate like the wall walk. So I have people hit me as hard as I can, I'll walk in, and their job is to stop me from going forward, and they always wind up collapsing. Uh, when you do the top two, then the person who walks collapses. Uh, and you can, you can actually prove that all the time. People can cave in as opposed to peel over, or keel over. When you keel over, it's not good. That means that they actually have top weight to still come in. Right. When you collapse them, there's no top weight. Everything goes into that single point. Best thing is think of a piece of plastic that's like this big. As it comes towards you and you have a pen or a knife, as it goes forward, let's say the, uh, the plastic's really, really strong, what you see happen is, is this will go forward, but that point in which the blade is point starts stretching and, and, and as this goes forward and it stays there and eventually rips, right? And that's what you want to do. You want to get all their force to close into that single point. You're not attacking the whole target. You're attacking the single point in the target. And if you can break that, then all, all the body energy wants to go into that weak point and it'll collapse them. If you hit an energy disperse, it doesn't break them. They'll keel over one way or the other. They'll go this way, they'll go this way, they'll go this way. And they can still roll in to get the hit. They can draw, the, and you don't want to let that happen because if they can get hit and their hit is more powerful than yours, you're gonna, you're gonna fall, you're gonna drink. You have to create the power to do the damage greater than his mm -hmm. force can do to you. So if I'm hitting her like this and she comes in and leans into me, you can see, but if I do the top mm -hmm. two, you see her body changes the way she responds. So you want to break the point, not, not push them away. You don't want to hit them away. You want to collapse them. I always like to say, don't hit them backwards. Hit them and collapse them where they stand. That's the objective. If they collapse where they stand, then that's good. Uh, you don't have to attack the whole person. Like I said, someone's 200 pounds. You don't have to push 200 pounds away. You break only one square inch. Yep. That breaks 200 pounds, collapses on that. Uh, it's like a building take the foundation out, it doesn't matter. You don't have to tackle all that, take the foundation out, the whole building drops. You don't have to tack the sides and break everything apart. You can just break the foundation, the structural points. And when you break the structural points, then the building will collapse. And that's what you want to do when you focus on the top two. Bottom three is not very efficient. Um, you often find that they, they, they rip, I've had students hit with pads, and um, they'll hit bare knuckle in the pad, mm -hmm. and their skin always rips down here. Yeah. I say so, stop hitting from down there. Hit with the top two, top two, top two. So I'm not sure what he was referring to, but he said that, um, but 
he said that he referred to you saying that with hitting a board to use the bottom three. I know generally speaking, you say to hit flush when we're hitting boards. Yes, so yes, I'm not yes. sure what you're referring to. I don't know if there's a video that you can send to us, but generally speaking, when you're hitting a board, you want to hit flush. Yeah, it's, it's just talking about board. Well, the difference between a board and human body is board's flat, the human body's not. Right. There's always curve in the human body, so it's different. Um, what, when, when you see people break boards, you know, they tend to do the top two. That, that's their goal, to break it through the top two if they're going for a, a horizontal punch. Um, bottom three is not not powerful. These things break very easy compared right. to these two. Um, yes, these are more aligned. If you look, these are more aligned. Okay? But, again, unless you do a vertical hit, this is not comfortable. People throw a round punch and do hard. These two are actually are the, the better, and they are the more uh, prevalent ones that hit before the bottom three anyways. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to give a shout-out to some other people I see on uh, let's see, we've got Josh on, we got Len. Hey Priscilla, how's it going? And who else we got? We got Sand Dude on, we got Corey, uh, Melanie is already on there. Uh, let's see, Zero Gravity, hey, how's it going? And we also have uh, Air de Zamba. I don't know if I said that right. And we have Lars on here as well, so welcome. I see some other people that still haven't said hello so if you haven't yet let us know where you're coming in from if you have any questions also let us know so um let's see we answered that one we got that one sand dude says i just started doing judo again any tips for me sifu judo um the purpose of judo is to, to throw them down right to throw them over so uh make sure they get proper leverage get a good focal point and then control the lever uh physics it's all physics right so um, if you're going to do Joe, make sure you have a good, good strong grip. Fingertips close to the here and bring it in. Don't close like this. Um, get good wrist control. The better your wrist control, the better you'll be able to nip, manipulate the person on, on the throws. So if I'm, I'm grabbing her like this, you know, don't do this. Do this. Drive it so it's in your wrist so you can affect them easier. But if you're doing it like this, it takes more strength in your body. So use your wrist, use your waist to help control and manipulate the, 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 the turns and the uh, steering and the throws, and then get your body in there and do the rest, you know, and that's all getting the focal point in and then boom and do that. But get good wrist and waist control. That's, that's the tip I would tell you. Get a strong uh, wrist torquing control. Uh, they give you much better uh, ability to control the person, and with that control, then you can manipulate them to where you want. There you go. Uh, Josh says, hey, Sifu, I know that training is half the battle and the other half is taking care of your body. I wanted to ask if there is any diet you follow to complement the training and working out. Uh, my diet is protein diet. You know, I, I, that's for me. I, I like eat more protein than anything else. Uh, but I also fast uh, once a week, too, uh, for cleansing, for detoxication, for, for burning the fat and stuff like that. So um, your diet, it's, everybody's diet makeup is different. Some people work better than me, some people work better than plants, some people are in between. Everybody's body type is slightly different, and you gotta find what works best for you. For me, meat works best for me. I eat fruits too, I eat a lot of oranges, I eat bananas and stuff like that, but I don't eat a lot of vegetables. Uh, I supplement that with pills and stuff like that because I can't eat vegetables. But um, my I'm the main, opposite. Yeah, she's the opposite. If she's, I eat a lot of meat, I'm gonna be sick, I'm gonna have asthma and all kinds of other problems. So for me, I'm vegan, plant-based, and most of my food is raw food versus having it cooked. So yeah, complete opposite. And everybody's different. And you know, I heal I, faster I, that way and stuff like that. So you really do have to listen to your body and find your groove. Yeah, and again, a vegetable diet for some people aren't very good for another. You know, but I'm there's no one. It's like saying one exercise is good for everybody. It's not. You you got to be more well-rounded. Uh, and you got to find what works best for you. But keep it natural, keep it whole foods, and as close to the source yes, as possible. Yes, that, that, that's for sure. Don't take steroid uh, pumped, uh, you know, chemically yeah. uh, fed animals. If you're going to eat animals, you know, like obviously make sure that they're being taken care of, they're living in their natural environment, all that kind Eating of stuff. Eating natural food, not corn and grain. Whatever was going on to them, you're taking into your system too. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, so and keep it well balanced too. Make sure you're getting all your vitamins, your nutrients, your minerals, and all that good stuff, and then keep that balance and whatnot. And, and you'll know when you find your groove, you'll have more energy, you won't get sick hardly ever. Like you'll just feel good, you'll sleep better, you'll look better, your skin will be glowing. You'll you'll know when you find your groove. So just pay attention to your body, and, and you will do very very well. Uh, let's see what other questions we have. So. Um, Fernando says, the problem here uh, where he's at, there is no Wing Chun, and I practice only um, 
I practice only, I guess, solo. Uh, what do you recommend to you? I recommend to you that you join Enter Shaolin because all of our training on Wing Chun is broken down bit by bit. We have lots of people in your scenario, Fernando. Uh, the reason we created Enter Shaolin was actually because I could not find anything in two different states within an hour and a half of me. Um, and I think if I would have searched further through the states, I wouldn't have found anything like this at all. And I wanted to not only be able to learn this myself, but have people like you that can't find this stuff in their own backyard to be able to have excellent training. Uh, so we have lots of members around the world. We happen to have a sale going on. If you want to check it out, it's nrshallon.com forward slash birthday. I'll put a link in, in uh, there too. You can save lots of money. You can get started for as little as $27 a month and, and just be able to train right and train good. Yeah, the most important thing is train with proper technique. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I always like to say, what you're lacking skill, you make them strength. So if you're training somewhere and you're using strength as your basis, I'm not saying it won't work for you, it can't work for you, but the problem is, is when you're fighting someone who's stronger, who has some training, and he's much stronger than you, you're gonna find that it becomes more and more difficult to work that technique. So you wanna use techniques that are based on control with energy rather than strength. Right. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying strength has no value. Uh, I, I was actually talking to a student today, I was teaching him. The idea is use the strength to make the most efficient, effective way of moving. Don't take 100% of your strength to only get 30% out. You want 100% of your strength to get 100% out. So you want to make sure the technique enhances your body's strength to make the work better for you. It's like levers. The more levers you have, the easier it is to feel <laughs> on the pool to lift up something. You, you want like for every five pounds you pull, you can pick up 200 pounds. That's the idea. Uh, you don't want to be five pound pull and have to pick up one pound. That, that's, that's inefficient. So the more levers you have, the, the easier it feels on the, on, when you pull the, 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 the cable or the rope down to pick up some weight. And, and that's the idea too. When you're training, techniques is designed to enhance what you do to maximize, yeah. optimize, and minimize the effort it takes, but maximize the output it, it, it gives. So um, technique is very important. We all train for technique. The question is, is the technique good or bad? And that's what, you know, at Enter we teach you very proper techniques. Uh, it's not strength-based. Um, you use strength, but not strength to overcome a force, but to learn to manipulate. For example, uh, I don't tackle it directly with my strength. For example, wrist lock is a great example. She f fights me with her wrist, right? Make a fist. And I'm not using my strength to make her hand turn. That's not my job. I use my strength to fortify my wrist so my wrist can manipulate, so resist me, so my wrist can manipulate her energy. So I don't have to use my body strength to make her wrist turn. I use my body strength to feed my wrist so my wrist can manipulate her so she moves. I'm not using my strength to make the movement. I'm using my strength to support my wrist to make the movement. And so that's what you're gonna learn, like how to use your strength to maximize your, 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 your power output with a, while, while minimizing the effort behind it. Right. Okay, it shouldn't take 100% of your energy for something that requires only 30% of your energy to get the same result. So if something needs 30%, just use 30% to get it to work right. You don't need 100% to get that 30% out. And, and so technique is really where you want. And like and I always talk about, in the end, it doesn't matter what style you take, it doesn't matter what you call it, it's irrelevant, it comes down to two things what you give versus what you can take. Do you have enough ability to do the damage? That's why a guy who has no fighting skill whatsoever, if he had a gun, he could shoot someone who's training for the last 20 years, you know, eight hours a day, 16 hours a day, and he can end it with just one round. Or if he had a knife that was hidden, and the guy comes, he slices him in the throat or stabs him in the gut, he can end up because now he can do the damage. He doesn't have to have the training, he just have to know how to get the damage out. I'm not saying, Someone who doesn't train has a great chance with a knife. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying the analogy is that someone who can train 20 years empty-handed and a guy who's got a knife has no training, his danger level has now become like really, really high. Whereas if he's empty-handed, uh, a trained fighter is going to destroy him. But that trained fighter is going to think twice before coming in if the guy has a knife and, and knows how to swing it and, and cut and stab. So it becomes a lot more dangerous, right? So it's about creating that power damage behind it. If you taught to make anything you touch explode to a million pieces, you really don't have to train that much. Think of Bruce Lee, uh, not Bruce Lee, uh, 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 Superman. He can just punch you because he doesn't have to train. He can just stand or take it, eat it, and just hit you because he can't get hurt as easy without kryptonite or magic and just, just pling with a finger and knock you out or destroy you. 
It's about learning how to generate power behind what you do. So we teach you how to create that power to be efficient and effective. And you learn techniques, for example, um, creating proper body structure, uh, learning how to create uh, proper drive, learn how to create proper focus, all these things. Are, we teach you the principles behind what you do. And then you can mix it however you want to do it. You learn like the alphabet. You learn what vowel sounds are, you what consonants, what, what, what letters put together makes a certain sound. And without ever having to see a word from before, you can phonetically spell it out, right, and, and sound it out, and then you can pretty much say the word if you know the principle behind it. And that's the same. We teach you the principles, so then you can learn to mix it and do it however you like. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So um, <laughs> one of our people, Cindy, was like, no, Sifu speaks English fine. No, we're not talking about Sifu learning different languages and trying to translate them all into different things. Or having someone else translate. <laughs> we're talking about someone else translating them, so like subtitles, you know, and, and, and voiceovers and things like that. So, and obviously our English videos would still be up, so you don't have to worry, sand dude, all is well. Um, <clears throat> uh, Fernanda says, I have a mukjong and I practice the forms, uh, but from there I stay tight. So it just sounds like you need more stuff. And again, everything uh, that we do is broken down bit by bit, piece by piece on innershallon.com, uh, Fernando. So definitely give that link a check. And if you do sign up, you have 14 days to check out the site, see if it's for you. And if not, email us at supportinnershallon.com and we'll refund you if for some reason you're like, ah, this isn't going to work for me. Um, Alex said, you know, chicken soup like Bruce Lee. Again, that depends on your makeup. Me, I can't do meats. I can't do things with high histamines or I'm going to be a hot mess. But for some people, chicken noodle soup and things like that work fabulous. Um, LY says, what do you say to people who say you're not a real martial artist if you have no fight track record? I know guys who are really good but aren't competing. Well, we can tell you what our thoughts are about competing. <laughs> well, it's, it's about for what the street. And if, it, if mm -hmm. someone attacks you and you survive, then that's it. No right. one knows until it's... You know, you could spar all the time, and then and then it comes relevance. Mm -hmm. Because if you fight someone who's really good, you're gonna think you stink. You fight someone who's not so good, and you destroy them, then you can think you're really good. So right. it's all a matter of perspective. Right. Um, you always want to spar. You want to do live mm -hmm. sparring. You want to do all that so you can better train. You know, the military they practice all the time going to rooms. They're yep. not always using live rounds, but they're practicing getting the response, the reflex, getting their their aim, their body position, knowing where everyone is and everything. And they work as a team. Uh, you're training for the same purpose. You're tr training as a team in terms of what your legs and your arms move. So if you're practicing a punch and you're punching like this and you move away, then you're not doing it right. You have to practice doing this so when you hit, it, it goes into it so you can develop. And again, I always talk about getting that power. Getting the power. Getting, get, you can't do the damage. It, it really means nothing. You can practice all the moves, all the hand, the parrying. If you can't do the damage, in the end of the day, it, it's no good. you got to be able to do the damage. And if it doesn't, it's like a nine millimeter, you know? A nine millimeter can't stop someone who hits them in the chest, but if you hit them right in the head, you can end them, right? right? It's about knowing how to use what you got. Uh, yeah, a 45 will stop pretty much anybody, you know? But if you're not a 45 and you're just a nine millimeter, then you have to use what you have and know how to hit it right. Um, when you're practicing, it's the same. You gotta practice, do the damage, practice doing the damage, practice doing the damage. You can't do the damage. Uh, and I, I always do pressure tests when my students hit me. I say, place it on my face. I'm gonna walk in. Can you hit me? And they walk backwards or they move backwards from that as I walk forward. Then that means I said, listen, in reality, you, you would never stop me. I, I, I'm gonna plow through and still hit you. They have to have the effect. And what I mean by that is, let's say I'm walking in and she's got a cross punch on my okay. face. And I said, look, I'm gonna come in to hit you. So move me away. And I go like this and I can still move forward and come in. Then she didn't do her job. Right. She failed. That means that on impact, she didn't get the drive because she's supposed to be able to get that force into me. Not yet, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. So when I come into her, she has to now drive that into me. No, she's going back with yeah. a little bit of her shoulder. She's got to base it more. And then, ah, that's it. And then I, 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 I could tell where they're going bad, and then I fix it, and, and then I'll keep going forward, and my job is to go through. Uh, same thing when I throw a punch. I might throw it towards her face. She has to intercept this, and I say, all right, I'm going to push through slowly. If you can't stop me from going oh, forward, you would have gotten killed. <laughs> so then as they get good, then I'll go from the space and I say, okay, stop this. And if I can get in, then I broke through. She has to know how to handle that and stop the punch. 
Uh, she has to pop the energy, and then I would say, okay, you're pushing away. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to get more bass because you're more top heavy, get a bass. Now she, she says she's pushing out to the side, so she has to push underneath and go up. So I would say push underneath and go up, and my, my arm, if it moves up, then she's doing the right job. If she's pushing me away, then she's not doing a good job. So then as I do this, I come in harder, and I'll push my body weight, and as I can drive through, you can see now she's holding it, she needs to pop it. So I would say, okay, I don't feel you converting energy, I feel you're holding it. So if I punch, you do this, the more pressure I put, the more I should feel go up, and then, right, now she's able to manipulate the energy. So we do a lot of pressure tests like that, and then we'll do sparring where, where I'll hit, and if I can break through, then that means that obviously they failed, and so we'll go back to the routine and say, okay, I'm gonna do it again. I'll mix three punches in, and the fourth one will be the one that she failed. I won't tell her when I do it, I'll just do the other three, and throw the fourth in at any time. It could be the first, it could be the second, the last, or the third, but she has to learn how to stop the other and then still stop the one that she fails. And then every, and, and every time she fails, we break it down, say, do it again. I'll do that four or five times to get the muscles used to it. Then we'll go practice it. And then again, we keep doing it over and over until the body yeah. gets used to it. The idea is to train the muscle memory to do it right without thought. And, and, and then as it becomes more natural to you, then you do it without thinking. Then you, you're going to do it instinctively because of that. Yeah. So what do we think about like people not having a fight record for competitions? Well, competitions have rules and stuff like that. Just because you don't go and fight in a ring doesn't mean that you can't survive on the streets. So that really is irrelevant. Well, or that yeah. you fight you, in the ring see, that you can survive on the streets. You know, it goes both ways. You, you see all the time. You see a lot of people who, who like. And I'm not saying any school, but a lot of times people go from Wing Chun and they spar a lot of Wing Chun guys. Mm -hmm. You need to mix it with people from right. different uh, styles, different uh, uh, training techniques, because you're not going to fight a Wing Chun guy, okay? And you think you're doing very well because you've learned how to counter the Wing Chun mm -hmm. attacks. Boxers don't punch like a Wing Chun guy. So you have to go in and train against the boxer, uh, a Muay Thai guy, an MMA guy, which is basically boxing and Muay Thai anyways. But you have to learn how to train and handle those different type of attacks and not train just to fight Wing Chun against Wing Chun because you're basically learning how to fight a Wing Chun straight line, center arm sticking, staying close. Now you might be very good with that, but when a guy takes you out of that element, like say a grappler takes you to the ground, you have to learn how to fight a grappler. You have to learn how to fight that, that close in tight position, him holding on you. And because once you don't know what to do, you're going to go to panic and you go back to defensive. You're going to try and get him off you so you can create like a reset to go back into a position where you're comfortable and fighting. But once a guy like got a hold of you, he's trained to stay on you. He's trained to take you down. He's trained to put you out. Um, and so you have to know how to handle it. You have to train. Like I always train. It's not about the defense. It's about the counter offensive thing. If someone gets in on me, I got to find a way to get back in. I don't have to get away, but find to use that advantage to get in put my arms in the right position, get in the right structure, uh, get in the right technique to, uh, to control points, not try to get them away from me. It's defensive. So you gotta find counter-offensive techniques. So if, if someone gets me in a, like a Muay Thai clinch, is a great example. Right? A lot of people try to grab the arms, they try to get the, the clinch off. We don't, we, 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 we love the clinch, okay? If someone clinches my head and they bring me down to a knee, a lot of people get like this and they try to get them off. The problem with, with, with that is, is you're not doing anything to stop them. Where she clinches me, here, now I use it. Now I turn her energy. I, 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 I took the clinch and I took advantage of it to put it back on them. So now you can see she feels that come back. She doesn't have time to knee because I'm putting the pressure on her. Whereas if I go like this and I try to get my head off or get away, I'm going against her. So she's able to put it. Instead, I'm going to take this pressure that I feel pulling me down. I'm going to feed it into her. So I'm going to put it into her so she can't bring that back to me. I'm always going for the attack or the counter. I am not trying to get defensive. I'm trying to take advantage of what I'm given and use it to my advantage, not try to stop it or get away from it and reset. I want to take what I'm given and, and take the attack. There's always an attack somewhere or a counterattack somewhere. You have to learn how to find it. You know how NASA, there's no way you find a way. If there's no uh, attack, you find the attack or the counterattack. There is always attack or counterattack one way or another. There's always, you just can't panic and go for the, Default mode, I, I gotta get away, I don't know what to do. And that's, it's natural for us to do that, but that's why you have to train how to get used to doing that and handle that and staying in that pressure and learn how to stay and deal with that pressure and use it to your advantage. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, there we go. All right, so let's see what other question. Uh, Fox uh, Goku says, I had a second question, was how to work with heavy downward pressure with Chi Sal partner. I'm referring to your video, how to deal with hard downward pressure. However, I'm looking for the Chi Sao application. 
Well, heavy downward pressure means that you're giving a high, a hard upward pressure. That's, that's why you feel it's heavy. So if someone's got this heavy downward pressure, remember, they're pushing on one point. So if she's pushing hard, if you feel like she's pushing uh, heavy, you're, you're fighting back. If I feel heavy pressure, I would turn it off so I don't let them. She's push heavy on me. I, I'm going to rotate. I'm going to take that pressure down. I'm going to let it slip off and bring the other hand in. If I feel more heavy on this side, then I'll bring it to that side. They can only push heavy because they're pushing down on point. And the reason why it feels heavy is because you're pushing the opposite direction. You gotta let it roll to the left or right of you, depending on which direction they are. If they're neutral, they're going straight down, then you can turn it left or right. Yeah. If they're pushing, like, like I said, they're pushing more heavy on my hand, then I'm gonna let it go and I'm gonna invade from the arm side. If I feel it pushing more heavy, and I'm gonna rotate and turn out. So the easiest thing is like think of like a seesaw. She's gonna push. If she favors one side, I'll give into this side she favors, but I'll put, come in on that side. If she pushes more on this side, then I'll turn and go that side. You don't want to challenge it on point. You want to roll it off point. So if you're already feeling like someone's doing cheese out and they're getting heavy on your arms and you feel like they're heavy, that's because you're, you're, you're trying to hold up. When you feel the heavy, rotate them off. Don't give them the point to push from. Rotate that off. Uh, the great example is like this, and I do this all the time. She's pushing my finger. Of course she's going to push my finger if I push back. It's a lot of pressure on my finger. But what I want to do is I want to take that pressure. I'm going to turn it left, push into me. Turn it right, I'm going to turn it. So she can never get a direct pressure. So you can see she's wobbling because I'm turning the pressure. I'm not giving her direct pressure. I'm giving her indirect pressure. She can push, but never on me, just around me, near me, next to me, by me, but never into me. So when you feel someone gets heavy, it means that you're fighting back. How can pressure, what's the definition of pressure? Definition of pressure is basically opposition of force. Pressure can't exist without force being opposing. So if you feel heavy, it means you pushed up as they push down. It's impossible. Imagine if you stood on a scale on a hard floor. As you stood on it, it'd give you weight. Let's say it's 200 pounds. What it means is as you're exerting pressure down, the spring is compressed, but the ground is pushing up to give you that exertion. Now imagine if you stood on soft mud as the scale's on top. Now you stood on top of it. It's not going to give you the actual weight because it's going to sink, right? So pressure can't give you the right, or the, 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 the scale can't give you the right readout because the pressure is giving more than it's pushing back. So... You cannot get an accurate reading that has of your standing on mud, right? So it's the same. He cannot put more pressure on you unless first you put pressure back. So when you feel a guy being heavy on your arms, it's a sign you fought him first. Rather than turn the energy, you went against the energy. So pay attention to that and don't let that happen. That's why he's mm -hmm. able to, to put a lot of weight on you. Turn him off like a seesaw, this way or this way, depending on which side he's doing. Uh, Fox Goku says, does that also work with someone a lot taller than you? Yes, just remember this, and people ask me this all the time. When someone's taller than you, they still have to punch down to your height. So if I'm this tall, she still has to come down to Do my height. Go over here. So she still has to so. <laughs> come down to my height to hit me. Oh, so okay, she, so, I'm, oh. Well, hit, punch, doesn't matter. She still is going to play more along this level if she wants to hit me. She's not going to hit from that height. She has to hit down here. Right. So if she's coming to hit me, she still has to move to my level. And I, I guess manipulate that point. And again, I can't hit her face because she's tall, but I'm going to hit her body first, and then I'll pull her hand down and go for the face. You know? If I can't get to the face at all, I, I'm not going to go first out of my way to get to the face. I'm going to hit the body. I'm going to pull her. I'm going to do both. Uh, I'm, I'm going to torque her wrist. So if I, I can feel, I, I can torque her and make her move to me. So again, that, that's just based on what the technique is, but you don't have to worry about someone tall on you because they have to go to your height to hit you. You don't have to uh, go to their height for them to hit you. They right. have to go to yours. Right, don't overextend to get to them. Let them come to you. Mm -hmm. And then learn how to fight in the tight quarter. Play on the arms. Use the bridging points and close in for that. That's what Chum Kill is all about. It's about bridging in, closing in the gap. You might not be able to hit their face, but like I said, they got to come down to you. You hit the gut, they buckle, then you can hit the face. Uh, unless the guy's like, like eight foot tall, you know, we're, I'm taller than her, but not, not, not so much, much a taller, but that, to the point where a couple inches. It, it, it's, it's, where she can't hit me in the face. Right. I'd have to be like really, really tall for now. But then, you know, kick him in the knees, hit him in the gut, the groin, to make the body buckle, Bring twist the wrist you. and torque the arm, um, climb up, step on like in leopard. We we actually step on the knee and climb up to create a uh, hit. Uh, kicking can go to the higher range because it's got a longer extension. But don't fear someone taller than you. The advantage that a tall person housing you is they can keep the distance. Right. Now, they're both playing Wing Chun, then he's not keeping the distance. He's fighting at close range. So it should be to the same advantage you have. He's just going to wind up pushing you away on the hit. And it's going to make it hard for you to reach. So you have to turn him off you 
to make sure that he's not taken away. But if he keeps stepping backwards, that's the advantage. Then you have to go into like weapon striking or shooting for the grappling. But you're not going to be able to kind of check him out and mm -hmm. try for the hit because he'll always back away. So it's about learning how to, like I said, make what you have work for the best of you. You can't get in because of his reign. Hit the arms instead and then learn to work in or use your legs to go for the low leg kick so he cannot be mobile enough to step backwards and then come in. Right on, right on. Corey says, Sifu, I'm having trouble rooting. I think I'm rooting, but I get uprooted very easily. Any tips? Yes, I, I, I know what uh, your problem is. If you feel you're rooted and you get uprooted, then your arms aren't controlling the pressure. So he's uprooting through the arms. Okay? It's not your root that's failing you. If you have root, okay? Let's just say, because you said you have root and you're getting uprooted, it's your arms. And what I mean by that is, if you're doing anything, let's, let's just use push hands as a great example, okay? Uh, if I'm like this and I feel very rooted, the reason why I feel uprooted is because I'm fighting over with my arms. I'm not manipulating through the arms. So I might get uprooted because I, I feel like I'm down, but when she's pushing me, I, I, I'm, I'm getting this shoulder coming up, it's coming to me, and that's going to break my root. Uh, so it's, it's, it's in the arms now. So she's pushing me, I keep the control of my hands, and I can manipulate her. So you can see here, I have my root, I don't break that but I'm manipulating the pressure here. If I'm like this, and all of a sudden, I get, it's because I fought it with my arms. I didn't control it with my arms. So rooting is, is gonna enhance your energy, but you gotta learn how to use that energy through the arms in the end. So that's, that's, that's where you're failing. Um, if you have a root, like I said, it comes on the stipulation that you say you have root, so I'll, I'll take your word for it. And the reason why you feel the uproot is because your arms are failing you after that. The purpose of rooting is to get the energy to your arms so you can manipulate it to get to the target. So there's so, a breakdown in the body. In the arms and or the body. Again, it depends on where you're making a mistake. I have to see you to do it. For example, I'm pushing her. I could be leaning, and that's bad for me. Right. So uh, I, I didn't do the right technique. Or I could overextend my arm, and, and she's pushing because I'm, I'm not controlling the arm. So I feel like, man, I have a good root, though. But, uh, because it doesn't matter how strong. Get a good root, right? If I go like this with a shoulder, I can take a root out because what's the nature of energy? It wants to go the path of least resistance, right? So it doesn't matter how strong a root is if her base mm -hmm. is uh, off from the shoulder. And I can take this base and just go like that. I'm going to take her easy. It's, it's, the root is the first stage, let's say. The second stage is getting out in your hands. And then the third stage is manipulating the energy to the target, whatever it is you're doing. So like push hands or she's punching me and I'm going like this. And I go like this. And I feel like I'm, I'm going off. It's because I'm more likely extending I'm top heavy. And what happens with people, a lot of times you see uh, Wing Chun, they, they'll do move and they, you always see them kind of fall forward. It means they're top heavy. They didn't have a strong base behind that. And so I might punch her and she might knock me backwards, even though like, but I have a strong root. Why? It's because you're probably breaking your base. So if you're doing like this and you create a proper base with the drive, you won't feel it going on your feet. Anytime you feel your feet uprooted, somewhere along the line, your arms failed you. Okay? You leaned, you didn't use three proof one way or another. That's why you're, you're up, uprooted very easily. If you have your root, like I said, I'm going on the basis that you say you have your root, but that would be the failure. All right, hopefully that helps you, Brother Corey. And Sandy says, how do I do a leg sweep? Well, there's different kinds of sweeps you're talking about. Um, I think you're talking inside, about in regards outside. to judo, but I mean, obviously there's still inside, outside in regards to that. So let us know, Sandy, what specific leg sweep you wanna do and we'll give you some tips on that. Fernando says, a question is, the Mook Yang Jong, uh, how many hours do I practice? Uh, how many hours are good? And what do you recommend you practice? Well, we have the 12 Jongs all broken down for you inside Inner Shaolin. That's what we recommend you practice. Now, how many hours a week do you recommend a person practice? Well, let's just say this. Um, time is not as important as in terms of quality, okay? Uh, you can practice 10 hours and do it wrong all the time. Right. And that don't mean That'd squat. Be bad. <laughs> you want to practice and make sure that you are hitting with the proper force or like the three proof. You don't want to feel the feedback come back at you. Um, you're better off practicing five minutes a day and doing it right than t uh, three hours a day doing it wrong, right? So that, let's establish that. Um, to get your body to learn it, it, it's all about consistency. So it's not about doing five hours one day and then skip it for two weeks and then do another five hours. That doesn't really benefit you. It's, it's, it's better to do it small portions every day than it is one big portion and then skip a few days. So uh, when I was training, I got up to like three, four hours of training every day. But it was quality training. I made sure that I didn't just, like for example, lifting weight. I didn't just push heavy weight. I controlled it. I brought it down. I went to a pause. I made sure that my chest pushed. My elbow was steady. I wasn't throwing my hands. I wasn't arcing my back. I made sure I concentrated to the point that I need to use my chest, my tries, and my shoulders, and everything. 
without like I said, arcing back, leaning, or just bouncing off my chest. That 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 is not as efficient. Okay, it's about learning how to isolate every point in your body and learn to manipulate the way you want. And the good thing about that is as you practice like that, you're learning how to find the control to do exactly what it is you want to do. You're not sacrificing that to make others work for you where you're compromising your body structure, your energy and stuff like that, creating an imbalance. For example, I'm thinking of practicing how to hit her, let's say. And I, I demonstrate all that. I might go in my head and I'll go like this, I'll punch her. And I might go like this and I'll throw harder and, and, and what I'm doing is I'm just throwing, but I'm bouncing. So that tells me that I can throw harder, but if I feel a feedback, that's no good. I'm supposed to be able to hit, and she's supposed to feel, and not have that come back to me. So it's about getting the feeling of learning how to inject the energy to the point without that feedback. And you have to learn to do that through muscle memory. Like um, I was training my students today on learning how to do the three types of strike, linear, round, and low. And I would put my, I had a pad, but I would say like give a straight punch to the palm, like this, so ready? So I'll be like, here, straight punch to the palm, and if I can push her in, and it was no good, if I go, go like it, and, I, and she gets that feedback, that means that she doesn't have a proper, so I would go, go slow, now I'm gonna push it slowly, make sure it doesn't come back to you. So now she's getting the structure, then I would be like, go here, this angle, and see, I, I can oh, see the back. Yep. That means that she has a failure somewhere, and then I would fix it. And I'm trying to get her muscles to learn how to do it right, no matter what the right. angle, where it is, and fix it. So I'll be like, okay, come here, punch, and if I'm going, now make sure you have your base, make sure you have a drive, and make sure, right, and I was like, push harder, and she doesn't break from it, then she's doing the techniques. And then we'll do this over, and I would push, and eventually her body gets it, and so when she hits, she's not having a weak point where she collapses, because obviously, if I'm punching and I have a weak point, and she came in on me, and I'm right. like, she'd probably knock me backwards, and I wouldn't affect her that well. I have to create that hit to when I hit, she is going to be moved from that and I will not be affected by it. Now, proper technique is like if I'm doing this, I'm going, and I, that's not good. You don't want to sacrifice throwing more energy to get less out. You got to put the energy right to get the maximum out. And so, proper technique. You want to train more properly. And like five minutes, ten minutes a day of proper technique is much better than three hours of improper technique. So, um, I, first off, when you're learning basics, you don't have to go that much, okay? You don't have to do that much. Uh, when I start my students, I tell them, give me 200 punches every day, just land the punch on the wall, boom. All I want them to do is land. Land, because I'm training the muscles how to move properly, not how to hit fast, not how to hit hard. It naturally hits fast, okay? You already have speed. The question is, can you keep the focus behind the speed? So if you're not, then you gotta load to go slower to keep consistency in your focus. Mm -hmm. And as you get better in the focus, you'll naturally get faster. And it's not because you have to go to the gym and lift harder and get faster. You're just now performing better at a higher speed. And so that's what you want to train to do all the time. So then you can, as you get better, then you can add a longer time. But first, you got to get that development, you know, laying that foundation on a building. Get that concrete down. Get, make sure that it sticks. When it, 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 it's formed, it won't move as you add to it. Then you can add and add and add. But get the foundation, get the muscle memory down. It's better, like I said, to spend 15 minutes a day properly than it is in two hours of improper technique. Just get the technique down. Get it to when you hit. You don't feel like you're straining your shoulders. Uh, round punches. I would throw the pad. Like, oh, she goes in a straight punch here, and I go like this. Give me a round punch, round. And then if I go like this, okay, try not to let me move you backwards. If I can move her backwards, it tells me that she fell. So I don't feel the, the elbow driving. I feel her shoulder pushing. I should feel the shoulder, the elbow. I should feel the elbow. So I would, as I push harder, and I go in and see how it, she's moving backwards. She's actually leaning a little bit. I can feel it. So she's not getting her root down. So she has to get that elbow up here from the round. She has to learn how to sink her body, turn her hips rather than lean, and shift her weight forward, get the base. So like for example, I was telling myself, don't go from here to here. Push your elbow past me, and then drive it into me. Push it, and then she'll have more power. So I would break it down like that and break down the body mechanics and get her to do the technique right. And I'm not giving in to her. If she did it wrong, I would never have moved. I don't move for the sake of saying, let them have a false belief they're doing it right. They have to do it right for, them, for me to ever move. I won't move unless they do it right. So um, it looks like I'm giving, I'm not. I'm actually holding her with the same energy as before. It's just she's getting the connection right, getting the energy right. Not, not leaning, not tilting, not throwing her weight. She, she's got to learn how to put all the energy behind that one single point. When we move, our whole body is supposed to hit, but it's supposed to hit behind the wrist, not hit the face. I'm not using my shoulder to hit her face. I'm using my shoulder to drive to the elbow so the elbow could drive to the wrist, so the wrist could turn to the point, so that's what hits her. So all this is supposed to complement this, not this 
push to hit. This goes into that hit. And, and that's what you, you want to train, the quality to get the right technique, to get the right uh, uh, control behind what you do. And then you'll be able to do it faster, more efficiently, more effectively. Right on, right on. <clears throat> so Sandu said, talking about the leg sweep, um, can you say hitting from side or hook leg, then push backward like in Wing Chun? Leg sweep. Hitting from the side or hook the leg, then push backwards. I don't know what it means, push backwards. I'm not sure either. Pushing is a forward motion. Are you pushing them backwards? <laughs> Maybe that's what you're Maybe saying. Maybe I think he's video? talking like this. I think he's talking, put a leg forward. You're talking about like, like, like this, a hook and then this, uh, pushing them backwards. Um, hooking is like this. So if I'm going to hook her leg, whether I'm going to the inside or outside, the key is not to attack the leg. The key is to attack the ankle. So when I'm going to do a hook sweep, I want to turn my foot and get my shin to turn to support this. So I'm not trying to hook her like this with my leg. I'm, I don't want to hit shin to shin. If she's got strong shins, she's going to be able to hurt me with it. You want to get the ankle. So if you can see from the camera, I want to hook in the ankle. Her ankle turns. Okay, so you can see, hold so I can't move you. So if I'm like this, I, I'm, I'm hitting for her foot, her leg. It, it's like, I'm not fat. I gotta go to the ankle and rotate the ankle. Yeah. The ankle naturally supinates. So you wanna create that hit to create a supination motion. Um, uh, and then they'll fall. But if you're trying to hit them by the foot, by the shin, they can hold a, a strong stance and they won't break. You gotta attack the ankle and the joint through the hook. The torquing is the key behind the drive. Are they able to see that or do we need to redo that? What, Dan? Yes, you can see it. Okay. Thank you. Don't be afraid to but talk, y'all. Hooking from the outside is <laughs> the same. Help us help the people. You're not <laughs> trying to hit and, and tack their leg. You, 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 I don't know if they can see it, but when you're hooking from the outside, the key is to create the hook and inside again, take the ankle. I'm not trying to get her like this. It's very difficult mm. to take someone's leg that way. So you, you got to create a hook and take their, their ankle out uh, if you're going to hook. So you, you're creating a hook again, so as you can see, I'm holding. But you see how I'm, I'm turning that? Again, she can be ready, she can fight, she can give me all the strength. If I go like this, and I say I'm tacking her leg, I'm not taking her leg out. She can put a lot of weight, and that force driving down can be very, very strong, especially if she locks her leg muscles, they don't give. You gotta hit inside the ankle, right here, and it supinates, so she, she can't stop yes. that. When I can turn the ankle, the heel comes up. When the heel comes up, there's no weight, she'll actually, just mm. fall down. Yeah. So if you're doing like a hook like this, and she has this leg forward, and I'm inside in a tuple, I don't I want to just, I want to get inside and get the ankle. Yep. My, jo my goal is, my job is to get to that get ankle. the ankle. Okay, and, and the so if you're doing like a sweep that way. Uh, again, that's, uh, based on the leg sweep, I'm going on the leg sweep, but the push, I think, I guess he's, he's talking about sweeping it and getting the push in like this. I think that's what you're talking about. Again, it's not clear, it's vague, so I'm not really sure. But, um, it's hard to do a push and a sweep at the same time, okay? No, it's going like this and like this, it's hard. You're standing on one leg, and, and, and unless you break their balance first, it's, it, their mass is very hard to move. So me trying to go like, and then push, it's very difficult to do. I would never do that, uh, especially when a guy's putting energy well, into Well, and if me. you're doing it right, you don't need to try to do that. That would be... Yeah, well, I mean, I'm saying that's, that's not effective. It's not efficient or effective. It's, it's way out of the way. Uh, you don't have that driving force. Uh, you gotta break their body structure first before you can affect their uh, their momentum, especially if they put the weight on you. It's better just to hook the leg and turn the body than it is to push the body because they're gonna fall forward naturally. See, every time you do, you, you fall, so it's easier to throw them through that than it is to push them away. Again, based on what hook you wrote. The ankle. There you go. All right. So, <laughs> well, thanks, Dominic. You know, I, I know that you have a paper plane, but I don't think that's gonna work. Someone suggested that. Uh, they were asking about seminars and stuff and, and going out to San Diego, and I said, honestly, unless, you know, there was enough, there had to be enough of a demand, then we would, because we'd have to fly out at least five team members, and that's a lot of money, and we're just, just not wealthy like that yet, God willing, one day. Um, but uh, someone said we should buy a plane. I said, if we could buy a plane, we could afford five tickets, but hey, if anyone wants to hook us up with a plane or help us to be able to afford more things and do more things and travel more, uh, you guys can always uh, support us by becoming a member. We have a great sale going on right now or you can become a Patreon member. Uh, someone was asking about the five animals. We do have some of our five animals training on Patreon. That's one of the bonuses is being a Patreon member for $10 a month or more. 
You can go to enterchallenge.com forward slash Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. I'll make sure to put a link in the comment sections on both Facebook and YouTube for that. Uh, for the sale link I, I sent for becoming a member, everything's 50% off or more. And that's going to be until we hit 500 members. So that could be in a couple weeks. It could be next month. That all really depends on how many people sign up. So I can't give you a time limit on that, but it's a really great deal. You can st get started at as little as $27 a month and get access to our whole training uh, hall, which has Wing Chun, Qigong, ground fighting, no deck na, uh, some women's uh, scenarios that are specific to things that women might encounter. We have, uh, I think I already said Tai Chi, core training. Um, I might have forgot something else, but everything is on that page, innershallon.com forward slash birthdays, all broken down on there, what's included and what you have access to. But yeah, we're going to need something a little bit bigger than a paper plane, unfortunately. Well, many of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it better be, a, yeah, some powerful paper planes going on God, there. Some powerful arms to throw it, too. <laughs> <laughs> and Sandu said, awesome. Thank you so much. He said, you didn't say that it had, you could, that you could take a ride. No, it definitely needs to be able to be, we got to be able to go somewhere with it and safely, safely go somewhere with it. Don't be sending us some broken down planes, y'all, okay? All right, so uh, LY says, sometime in the coming years, if I asked, will you consider being a coach for me and the UFC? Come. Sure. You, you've trained people for different things like that. Yes, so. yes, yes. If you have the means and the availability, we are here for you, absolutely. Uh, let's see, so Josh says, I do have one more question. First, I wanna give a shout out to my buddy, Corey, that's watching on YouTube. And secondly, I'm really interested in learning the dragon style. Do you teach that on the website? Patreon. Patreon. <laughs> so that's on there as well. And uh, let's see here. Frank says, hi, Sifu. Been really busy lately, but hope to catch up with you next week. Cool. Right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's see. I think that's everyone. It looks like we answered everyone's questions this week. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, real quick, um, <laughs> tour buses again. Hey money if y'all want to donate to us where we could afford to get a tour bus we would love that we've been talking about I think that he means us taking one not renting one no no like like us like going on a tour like a tour like oh oh yeah like i thought you meant bus. to rent a tour bus we, they're we've, thousands of dollars we've actually yeah. talked about that before um we would love to be able to like travel around the u.s and be like in different destinations for x amount of time and do like many seminars all over the place it would be fabulous uh, again, we are just not at that income yet. God willing, we will be one day. <laughs> Dominic says, start folding. Yeah, we're going to need a lot of paper airplanes, bro. $100 bills, please, and fly <laughs> yeah. to us. Yeah, send them in $100 bills, um, those paper airplanes that might help us with the fun. Um, and uh, John, yeah, so I'm waiting to get some calls back today uh, in regards to the seminar. That's why I didn't mention anything earlier, but since you asked, I will let you guys know I am still waiting um, it doesn't look like we have enough people to do it at a hotel, so we have a couple other alternate destinations that we're looking at. Uh, one is like renting out a gym and stuff like that, but I'm, again, I'm, I'm waiting on other people to get back to me. I'm making phone calls and, and playing waiting games and stuff like that. So, Melanie, that is the news I have, sadly. That's all I have. I'm hoping that by the end of the day, God willing, I will have a more definitive answer for everyone on that. And we are also considering maybe doing like smaller like groups of like 10 to 15 people here locally um here and where we're at in new jersey and stuff and having them more frequently throughout the year so maybe that'll help more people be able to come out and get some one-on-one -on -one training and we'd also be able to lower the cost a little bit so that's what we are thinking about <laughs> he, said, he says i get to come this year i just don't want to miss it well we don't want you to miss it either and we are working on it brother so um hopefully i will have information in today's update for you um Steve Larry, do you want to talk a little bit with everyone about what we're going to be doing with the updates and everything like that for the next month? You're looking at me like a deer in headlights. <laughs> yes, I'm putting you on the spot. I'm making him work, y'all. Making him work. Come on over. Don't be shy. Bring some grapes. <laughs> Hi. We got updates. You're coming. <laughs> Really? You want to agree? Yes, yeah, thank you. All right. So usually we put out um, somewhere between four and five, three to five videos a week. Mm -hmm. New updates every week. Yeah, new training. 
Um, I think for the next 30 days, 30 or 60 days, it depends on how long will this takes. We'll let you know in 30 days. Uh, <laughs> if it'll we're be. not going to focus so much on putting new lessons into Enter Shaolin. Right. The reason for that is because we're going to be totally revamping the entire Enter Shaolin site, the way that courses are distributed. Me. Okay, when I say we, me, she's going to do most of it with my <laughs> guidance. What am I going to be doing? You're going to be going like this. It's going to be okay, Jamie. It's going to be okay. <laughs> Anyways, so we're working on that. We are, we, we are going to uh, make half of our YouTube, I believe, a membership. Yes, yes. Um, mainly because, honestly, um, what YouTube was five years ago isn't what YouTube is today. Well, explain the membership part to them. because um, You do it. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> On YouTube, they have a, a new feature for content creators such as ourselves that have 30,000 or more subscribers. And we have, uh, I think, what, how many now? 61. 60, 61. Around 61 something now. So thank you for all the yes, those that subscribe. And they have an option to do uh, like premium content for $4.99. It's a really small monthly fee um, to get some extra content and stuff like that. And uh, what Steve Larry was about to share was once upon a time, or even now, depending on what type of content you put out there, because we've met creators that have the same amount of people and videos that we do um, that are making, you know, fifteen hundred dollars a month or more in AdSense revenue, when we're making about a hundred dollars a month. So that's a really, really, really like huge stuff, difference. Stuff on YouTube isn't what it used to be yeah. years ago. It doesn't yeah. really pay. Well, I was gonna say those same creators would probably be making six thousand several years back ago. So um, you know, but because we are in the and niche I, we're to, at, to, to give you an idea, I had. 4,000 subscribers mm -hmm. on an older YouTube channel of mine. Just 4, and just with 4,000 subscribers, it used to net me somewhere between $650, $700 a month. Do the math on that. That's a huge difference, right? But because we are in a martial arts niche, they consider it violent. Like, for example, we, I, we put up a video, and it was about bone conditioning. It was considered sexually offensive material by YouTube. Bone conditioning, Which means all. we couldn't monetize it. Yeah, so <laughs> they could, YouTube could, right. we could. <laughs> so we, we were dealing with all kinds of weird stuff with that. And uh, so what we're going to be doing is taking some of our um, series that we've been doing. And some series we're going to be doing. And some new series that we're going to be doing. Uh, we're actually working on right, right now with the Jong that we're going to be I, doing. Can I, can I see some good news? Yeah, sure, sure. So I want to add some kind of good news for our under Shaolin members. The stuff that we have behind the membership paywall on YouTube, on YouTube. is actually going to be put into the Enter Shaolin website for you guys. Because, mm -hmm. you know. You yeah, we're going to we're gonna put a section in the training hall with bonus content. So you'll have access to it. So anyone that's a member to Enter Shaolin, um, a paid member to Enter Shaolin, won't have to purchase this. Uh, this is just the way for us to hopefully make more money for all the hard work we're doing on YouTube. Um, also to be able to give Maybe a little... Maybe pay some bills. Pay some bills, you know, because yeah. feed the child. You don't have to pick your favorite one anymore. Fill, right. Yeah. <laughs> feed all the children in <laughs> the house. Not just the ones we like. Um, not just your favorite. Now. <laughs> so who's yeah. your favorite? Now I'm kidding. Um, I'm guessing it's Lucas because he's the tallest and biggest one. I love them all. There's no favorite. I know. No, I'm just messing. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So it's going to be a, a small fee, and we're still going to be doing the the Q and A's here on YouTube for free. We're going to be also, you know, cutting up the Q and A's and and putting out the small little uh, tidbits and stuff to to make it easier to search when you're looking for something very specific. All that stuff will be on here still. Some of our older videos are still going to be on here for free. It's just going to be some of our more curated um, content and series. Like we're doing a will be uh, on um, on there. Yeah, go ahead. We're doing a Jong series. By we. He's going to be doing a Jong series <laughs> while she's fixing the website. I'm taking a lot of naps, people. i got to rest. Yeah, he's going to be working on I healing. I got to rest, too. He's going to be working on healing. I'm going to do some rebounding while they're working. I'm tired. Maybe, right, maybe taking some naps. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so we're going to be doing a lot of things behind the scenes. Uh, we still are going to be doing weekly updates. It's just not we're not putting out any new content. We're going to be working on uh, refilming some of our older content. We're working on creating, uh, reshooting the whole Jong uh, set that we've done on site, inside of Inner Shaolin. So that's 12 sets total, all the breakdowns, everything. It's a lot. Um, and we're going to be doing a whole, whole, whole lot more. But um, in shorts, in the shorts. The webinar questions, everything will still be up on as a free thing. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, so there's still going to be lots of great free stuff yeah, on So please YouTube. come visit us every week when we do these because we love talking to you. Yeah. Well, they love talking to you. And uh, give us a thumbs up, share, and a like, more. because that helps us, too. Yeah, 
Yeah, so we will be having a little, uh, you know, $4.99 YouTube uh, membership. Again, if you're already an Inshallah member, you won't have to pay for that. This is just for that, those our subscribers are the, the that are, side. you know, on YouTube and want to get some, some cool content uh, that we've been putting out and that we will be putting out and would like to help us to keep doing what we're doing because, believe it or not, this is not free. All the equipment and the time and energy that goes into this costs a lot of money. And uh, contrary to belief, we're not rich, and and we're you know barely we're rich in love. We're rich in love, rich lots in of Christ. love, and, and agape Christ, love. agape love, agape love, agape love. Agape love. Agape love. <laughs> uh, rich in knowledge, but you know fun. We don't, even, we don't, even, we don't so even play our we don't even pay our team members more. We just make them work. We're we really promise them ourselves. that we'll pay them. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we give them an IOU. An IOU. <laughs> help us, help us feed the children and our partners and ourselves. Um, but anyways, yeah, that should be out next week. Long story short. So that's some different changes that we're going to be doing. Um, also, uh, like I said, we're working on completely revamping Entershall and making it easier to navigate. Uh, also, we're going to be making it where because we've had people are like, hey, I just want to buy your guys if we can chun. Uh, can I do that? And how our s current system is, we're not able to allow for that. But in the future, there will be options where someone could just, you know, purchase Wing Chun or maybe just purchase the Jong training or Silent Town, oh, yeah. things like that. Obviously, it'll be way cheaper for them if they just become a full member. And honestly, they'll be more well-rounded of a martial artist if they do all the stuff that we do. But for those that are just not interested in that and just want, like, you know, Tai Chi or this and the other, we're trying to make it where everyone can have access to the things that they really want. Um, if, if they just want one thing and just make it easier in general for everyone to interact and whatnot. So it's a lot of work. So that's why we're going to be taking a little time off from adding the new content in right now to enter Shaolin so we can really concentrate on revamping everything and really just really making, making, the site it, making the site better for Even better. Members. Yeah, better for everyone. So we have the time to do it. Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, Lars says, uh, the link you have put up on the ambassador is not working. Uh, let me her. go check on that because it was working last week. Shaolin forward slash ambassador. Maybe you spelled it wrong. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't put one up this not week. You. So I'm that maybe. Person. Yeah, it's it's working on my end. So I'm gonna put a link in because maybe for some reason uh, we have the wrong one to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that link in. For the ambassador program, there you go. It is working on my end. If for some reason it's not working on your end, please let me know what browser and device type you're using so I can do some troubleshooting. I really appreciate it. Uh, Patrick says, my apologies, Sifu. Thank you for your insight on balance on your last Q&A and the simple explanation helped me to make so many connections instantly. Thank you. And um, You're welcome. He says, would you have any beginner Qigong practices that build internal power? Yes, that's all on the site under our Qigong section. Um, so I will go ahead and put a link to that as well. I told everyone I'd put a link to the sales, but I didn't get to that yet. So I'll put that in here real quick. So you can go check that out. Uh, you can get started for as little as $27 a month, brother, and check that out. Hey, Jason, I see that you have a lot of questions that just came up. I will address that next time because we're wrapping things up. Hey, Ian, um, no problem. You can check out the replay, but Jason, I will copy your stuff and we will address those next week. And it looks like everything else is good to go. I'm going to put up the Patreon video real quick. What's up? You talked about the Avid sale. We don't have that going on yet. Oh, never mind. I'm out of here. Did, we talked about that last night. <laughs> I'll forgive you, though. Oh. But we have the, the birthday sale, which has birthday an Avid sale because everything's 50% off or more. 50% so. off? How are you going to make any money? By them purchasing. Hey, you see, a member. Why, could you guys purchase the, the products so we can make some money? Please. <laughs> um, hey, Lars, I'm actually in Chrome and that link is working for me. Um, so you might want to see if, yeah, you might have uh, some settings that are blocking something. Um, you might need to clear your browser cache. Try that. And if you're still having issues, email me at support at and I'll see if I can help you further troubleshoot. But I'm on Chrome right now, and, and it was working on my on my particular page. So let me know. Also, make sure that your Chrome is updated, because if it's not updated, there could be an issue with that, too. That's usually the common thing. Something's not updated. Maybe you have a firewall that's up, or you're blocking cookies, or you need to clear your browser cache. So try all those. And if that's still not working, email me at support.entershallon.com, and we'll make sure to take care of you, brother, and see if we can help. 
uh, might be from Europe. We have members all around the world and definitely in the Europe area. So I don't think that's it because they would be blocking our whole site. So if you can get to our whole site, I think you should be okay. And we, I know we definitely have members in the UK. They would have already let us know um, if that's an issue. So yeah, it sounds like something that's going on with your computer. Do you have a firewall up? Check that out. Make sure you don't have anything blocking um, anything from being received and stuff like that. Uh, do you guys have five element Qigong? Five, no, not, not, not five elements. Um, we do Qigong, Nigong. Yeah, well, no, he's talking about the metal, earth, yeah, fire, water. Yeah, yeah, I know water. what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't base it on that. I mean, that's a philosophy, and I understand, you know, some people might believe it, but I believe in the biology. Uh, I believe that there's... Uh, a science behind what we do, besides the philosophy behind what we do. So um, I go based everything on science. So um, I go on how the body's natural energy works, the natural alignment, the structure in the body, how to properly breathe and uh, get in the right structure, and then how to create pressure by creating natural arc in motion and, and driving energy to the certain point that we want to do that from. So um, it's all kind of the same mm -hmm. in the end. The goal is to get the energy for us is to get out to the wrist. If you're not getting energy out of the wrist, to me, it's, it's, it's not very good energy. Uh, it's incomplete, I like to say. It's, it's, it's like a lot of Tai Chi people, they, the core, the core, the core. The core is no good without the wrist behind it. Okay, The core is, is it's like having a very powerful engine, but you can't steer it. You can just hit the gas and you can hit the brake, but you can't steer the car. It's like, it's, yeah, it'll get you some point, but if something's in the way, you're kind of stuck unless you can drive through it. So the, the wrist is like the steering wheel. You've got to be able to steer the energy where you want to go so you're not creating resistance that can hurt you. So without the wrist behind the waist, it's incomplete. Same thing with um, Qigong. If you're not getting it in your wrist, you're just doing it in your shoulders, going up your arms, and you might feel good. Like, yeah, you can feel force, but you're not controlling it, and there's a big difference behind it. Okay, right. a lot of people move energy, don't know how to control energy. In combat, you have to know how to move to control, not just move to overcome. Right. So. Oh, and Jason, real quick, you know, um, as far as you know, you were talking about like uh, looking at different YouTube channels and stuff like that. Uh, martial arts people in general are getting hit, so you might be successful. Like our numbers are growing all the time, our views are growing all the time. It's the ads and hey. revenue that's not growing and that's because of the type of content it is that YouTube is purposely not monetizing and giving us that much money for the advertising that they put on it. They're making lots of money off of us, they're just not giving us lots of money and that's not just We're for getting us. We're no, no That's martial arts people as a whole. Like our channel is growing all YouTube, well. All of YouTube, it's all of YouTube creators are starting to have this problem. Oh yeah, no, all of them are having this problem, but yeah, what I'm saying is depending, uh, Steve Crowder's monetization. depending on, you know, who you are and what the content is, it's some it's even more drastic than others. Like, like I said, there's people we know personally that are in, you know, gaming niches and different things like that, or, uh, you know, um, how to make money online stuff and things like that, that are making way more money than us with the same amount of, of views and content and so on and so forth and subscribers. So it's really just about what YouTube's doing. There's nothing we can do about that, but you know, find new creative ways to monetize the channel. So that's what we're doing. And that's that in a short. Um, <laughs> Ian says, can we see Sifu break the mug with a punch? Are you gonna buy a new one, brother? Or clean up the mess? I didn't think so. All right, so that will be a negative. Uh, <laughs> Peter says, go on, it's Friday after all. Peter says, oh man, I missed you. Oh yes, um, yes, we are looking into getting sponsorship and stuff like that as well. Uh, that is something that we are, are looking into. And uh, we do have an education site. It's called Enershellen.com. It's actually one of the ways that we do survive and are able to do this. But, uh, you know, there's lots of ways to monetize and keep growing and stuff like that. So we're always looking at different ways that we can because we do love what we do and want to be able to keep bringing this awesome content to all of you. So help us help you and share, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. If you guys and gals have any questions between now and next week, email us at support.com or give us a call at 1-844-9-KUNG-FU. We'd love to hear from you. And until next week. Wait, wait. Uh, Patrick oh. asked a real quick question. Sure, it's easy sure. to answer. He says, Do you have a school or are all the classes online? We do have schools. Yes. Sifu Larry teaches here. Mm -hmm. I teach. 
uh, in Glassboro. Yeah. So, and we have the online. So, yes, we yes. both have physical schools as well. Yes, we do. So, yeah, if you guys ever want to come and do some training, again, email support.inshallah.com. Let us know how many hours you want to train, when you want to come in, and we'll see if we can schedule you in. Uh, we've had several members, even one of our members, Hersey, was supposed to be here today. Hersey, where you at, bro? We miss you. Uh, he comes in from, I think it takes him about an hour and a half to get here. He comes in usually two times a week and stuff like that. We have some people that are further a away. A month or a week? No, two times a week. Oh, oh wow. He's very dedicated. He is awesome, okay? Wow. He's not messing around. And then we have some people that just come in once a month or sometimes like come and take vacations to come uh, train and whatnot. So we are here for you in all cases. Let us know how we can help you. And God willing, I will have information on our next seminar next week and uh, in the update hopefully as well. So keep your eyes out on that. Stay tuned. We love you all. And we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye. Bye.